What's up guys, I'm Justin Davis. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have something new from Rotor Riot. It's all about the HD1 today. This is a five inch quad frame with five millimeter arms. They are replaceable, super beastie arms. True X design, classic long body type of frame, which is nice because the DJI digital unit sits on the very back right here. You have access to your HD uh, SD card back here. You're gonna use a 32 gigabyte uh, up to like Sandus Extreme Plus type cards work the best in this unit so far. And you have enough space to get your battery mounted on top with the super beastie hot dog FPV strap that I have here. So thanks out to Hot Dog FPV for giving that to me for free at the West Coast Throwdown. That was super nice. And it has enough bed up front to be able to ride a GoPro on there. So guys that want to run 4K video or 2.7 at say 60p, you can do that up front with a GoPro mount. Uh, you do have your HD camera right up front here. Traditional design, kind of just barely poking out the front of the frame with a TPU sidewall type of mount. And I'm running all of the top gear on here today. I have the newest plug and play flight controller system from Hollybro. It is the Kakut in conjunction with the new Teco ESCs. It can go up to 6S. So uh, this is a beast, but I have it set up to 4S today with the new Ladrib motors. These are pretty nice. They have silver windings inside the stator which I like a lot. It's different than the copper coils I'm used to seeing. And it has a nice rose gold type of motor bell on the outside with drib, hype train, and we have 2650 kV motors on this baby. So uh, it's all ready to go, even with some glow in the dark props on there. And I have my DJI goggles back here with my left hand polarized circular <laughs> antennas on here. And we're also gonna test out this week the new Video Aerial Systems Cyclops. This mounts on the front right here and gives me that beastie quadversity setup. So super cool. Uh, we're gonna get rid of all these older antennas. However, in the past couple weeks, testing out the Lumineer AX2 series antennas, this tall long range one, I have to put some links down below for you guys to grab and try out some of these because they do have really nice penetration uh, through like close up type of freestyle setups. If you're flying close proximity, it's really nice. Now, this is the type of quad that I can, I feel like I can really put it in there. And I've been talking about this to a lot of my friends on Facebook and online recently. Uh, ben Formals, we we're talking the other day. And I mentioned that with this type of HD setup with the DJI goggles, I find myself taking more chances. And uh, well, why? What, number one, I have a beastie quad here that I know I can send it and put it in there pretty close to trees and obstacles and gaps and things uh, and really put a lot of speed into this quad on 4S. But having HD and being able to see where I'm going for the first time, see individual branches, leaves, um, you can see smaller gaps and it seems like flying HD is going to push you to be an even better pilot. Whereas I was skeptical before, now I feel like I'm actually progressing to different levels. And I told my friend that I was flying at, at the farm the other day that uh, I was going to do one more pack and I was just going to go do a, a nice kind of mild type of flight. I was just going to go out there and cruise. And about halfway through, I power looped the, the, the road with the tree tunnel. So yeah, you, you find yourself coming up with new ideas with these systems because you can see so good. If you come back around from a power loop, even over a top of a huge tree cluster, you can really spot that opening to go back down under the trees. And once you come back down under on 700 milliwatt, you're not gonna lose it, which is great. It's just a mild, slight bit of breakup, and then you just blast through there. So it's um, a lot of fun to fly this one. The HD1 is a super freestyle beast, and this one's around $45. Uh, and uh, the drib motors, I believe those are around $20 to $25. I have to put some links down below for you guys to check this out. But it has all the bells and whistles on here with the TPU back mount for your DJI antennas coming off the back right there. And it's a really nice sort of classic traditional X-frame long body design with the optional GoPro mount up front. I think it's uh, a pretty cool design. So let's go ahead and take this one out to my friend's farm out in the beautiful Oregon mountains and do some freestyle with this system. And then we'll come back into the studio. We'll do a little closer look at this frame and I'll show you what they include. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right guys, welcome back from the flight test with the HD-1 from Rotor Riot. If you'd like to, you can stick around for a quick overview of this frame and you can check it out a little bit closer up in detail. I have to say that um, I have a pretty good experience now building a lot of different types of HD quads for you guys. Uh, I've, I've built uh, three different iFlight ones. The DC-3, I have the newest, larger frame that they, they released with the Dead Cat set up up front. We're going to try that one out coming up on the channel as well. Uh, the Mega B was super cool because I could get in there and get in the skate park without killing somebody with the props and having prop guards. But this is a whole different twist um, on those quads and even the Flynoceros, for example. The Flynoceros is just gigantic, whereas this one is just a little smaller and super beasty as far as their carbon thickness choice. I think that having the five millimeter carbon arms on a freestyle quad is great. I did have a few mild crashes with it. Didn't have any damage with it out there. Uh, if you were to hit a tree with this one, I, I think it would survive a tree hit. I did land it in one branch and I didn't even break any props. I chewed up some props out there, but um, I came back with a, a, a quad intact, which is great. Didn't break any of the motors on here as well either. And I gotta say, if you have not seen Hot Dog FPV straps, you gotta go check out Hot Dog FPV. Mostly, I'm here to talk about the HD1 frame. And first off, I, I said that I liked that it was a traditional long body frame, mainly because when I'm doing these type of builds, I wanna feel like everything is not crammed. And that's the most important thing to me, to feel that stuff can fit in here without being right on top of each other. And that's really, really important. So I have my camera up front, my receiver right there, the Teco ESCs down here, and the flight controller up top. And I have my capacitor resting just above the flight controller with a little piece of VHB underneath it to kind of give it just a little bit of dampening in between there so it's not kind of cracking on top of my gyro. And I have a plug and play version of that flight controller, which is nice because they give you two extra cables in the box and it just plugs into the unit. You don't have to solder up all the wires to it, which is really convenient for you if you're doing this build. Uh, also in the very back, I used a couple of their risers back here and I have a whole drawer full of these, but uh, I use these sometimes when I need some extra padding in there and you can get a full size riser in here without this unit touching the very top and it keeps it elevated from the power connector down here. So you can run your XT60 cables out the side right here, like I have, and I just kind of zip tied them off to the strap so that they don't come out into the props right here while I'm flying. And this is a pretty easy setup. And uh, also I'd recommend maybe putting another zip tie down here just to make sure that you don't pull on this cable at all if your battery flies off. So one down here on the, across the arm in this cable to keep it stationary. And then one up here on the top of this strap, whatever type of strap you're using, just to keep it vertical. And so it doesn't kind of give any, um, any slack out here and, and cut your, your power source. Now, I also like that they have the TPU mount in the back. This was fairly easy to set up. And having it higher back here actually makes it easier to plug in these MMCX connectors and to just barely stick out the end of the TPU mount. So that was easy to set up. It was easy to add this on there. And tie on is nice because I can slide it forwards and backwards and when I'm ready to fly this protects my SD card by keeping it locked in there just like that because this doesn't have any kind of lock here if you have a hard crash this could pop out and you might lose it but again I think that the carbon fiber is really nice looking here you can see that they have a nice polish on this carbon it doesn't look dusty or cheap it actually looks like a nice quality carbon fiber it's not real super cheap China carbon, which is great. 
And one other thing that I have to mention is that if you buy the drip motors, the nuts that the the bolts that come along with it, they're not quite long enough to accommodate this five inch frame. So uh, you need to source some other motor nuts that are just going to be a millimeter or two longer so that you can get uh, a proper mount setup because um, otherwise what happens is they're not going to be long enough to really get up inside that motor base or if you choose some that are too long they're going to stick up into those coils and if you touch the coils inside there you guys all know what happens there that one is super close right there so uh, each of these motors kind of have that part that sticks down right here and I had to push some of that back up so that it was clear and free of any of my bolts sticking up there so very important that you don't touch any of those with your mounting bolts but I like the fact that the drib motors do have that sort of a silver coil inside looks really nice and again that sort of rose gold look looks pretty sweet on those motors very nice looking motor and also fairly powerful up front we have a good protection for the camera mount and up top you have enough room to be able to tilt it up to about 35 to 40 degrees or more and my camera seemed to have moved down just a little bit because uh, I had, did have more up front here but on the very top here I have my velcro front and back here and I kind of cut it up like the skateboard type of grip tape mount where you could see the rotor right logo on the top because I think that the, the frame the print on here feels pretty good it did scratch off just a little bit on the outside of that ring right there but that's a pretty nice print for their logo that's always a, a pretty cool logo to have exposed and I like that skateboard grip tape look there but let's go ahead and give some final thoughts about this frame and uh, I'll send you guys on your way and as always I appreciate you guys watching my reviews all right guys so now you have a better look and uh a, a, a good thorough flight test of this quad and while it could still use some more tuning it's not properly uh, tuned yet but uh, I, I can do that and uh, if I can I will share the PIDs with you guys because I know a lot of you guys like to fly my PIDs I will get it totally smoothed out and one of the other reasons that it might have a little more vibrations is normally I'm flying recently the Nazgul 51 I believe they're 5150 props or 5140s, they're super low pitch and really nice thin cord. That makes a difference on the flight controller. So the more air I'm pushing with this thicker cord prop, it's just gonna have a little more vibration in there. So that's just one thing to consider. Prop is everything on a tune. So a nice smooth prop, it's, you're just gonna have to tune it less. And that's um, usually the way it goes. But on the flight from yesterday, I, I, on all the testing, I just wanted to have the most power when I needed it. It's kind of like um, when you're flying freestyle, a wider cord is kind of like a sports car in a way. It's going to eat up a lot of your battery when you go high throttle, but when you need that high throttle and extra punch to get out of a maneuver, it's going to be there for you. So uh, especially with these motors, I didn't kill any of these motors on here and they didn't send me any extras here. So I've got four and that's it. So I'm happy that these survived. Uh, also, we got to talk about some final thoughts about the frame itself. Like... I love this traditional long body frame design because it's really open from front to back. To be able to go in there and change things is really easy. It's a six bolt top plate release, two millimeter top plate on here, and traditional standoffs all the way around, and replaceable arms on here. Just make this quad kind of a, uh, a really easy, even a beginner quad to start out working on with plenty of room and space to add extra things on here. So it gives you a lot of options, which I think is cool. I also think that the price around $45 is actually pretty modest for this company. I think there's a lot of companies out there like Flynoceros, uh, and others that have fairly expensive frames. They are really, really nice frames, but you're gonna get up into the $75, $79, uh, up to $100 and, and more for certain types of HD frames out there because these are a little more exclusive right now, but Rotor Riot seems to have come in at a nice price. So $45, get yourself some extra arms for it just in case you break one uh, on a session. But I think overall, it's gonna be a durable frame it flies well and with the HD system on here, we can really start to progress and learn new stuff flying freestyle and recorded at 1080p 
or with your onboard DVR. And I think that is where DJI is beating a lot of these other HD systems out there because tons of these other HD systems out there don't have onboard DVR. And by onboard DVR, I mean DVR on the VTX. That makes a huge difference when you're recording your videos. Otherwise, if you're recording from the ground station or your goggles, go back and look at that footage. You're gonna see breakup, frame loss, and all kinds of stuff in there. So hopefully Fat Shark Bifrost is gonna be able to have a nice, solid, steady stream without uh, the breakup on the screen in the DVR, but I bet you're gonna see it. So um, that's, uh, there's a lot of caveats with some of these other systems that are coming out cheaper, but no onboard DVR, <sighs> you know. Hopefully they will integrate it into the future. And I, I did mention it to Fat Shark. So Fat Shark, if you're listening, add that onboard DVR. Everybody wants it. Uh, it is going to make it a much hotter system. But for now, we're all hooked on DJI. And uh, this new frame from Rotor Riot is pretty awesome. 45 bucks. Go grab one on the link down below. I'm Justin Davis, guys. Take care. Be well. Happy FPV. And I'll see you on the next one.